Okay, so the integration of the secant function. Uh, this is a tricky one because if we write the secant of x as 1 over the cosine of x, which is its definition, and we try to integrate. Unfortunately, this expression here is not integratable. I'm not even sure if that's a word, but you understand what I mean. So we are going to have to manipulate this integrand in here to get it into a form that we can integrate. There's probably a multitude of ways you can do this, but I can think of two common ones. The first one is to use partial fractions. Now this first method will take quite a few steps, but I believe it is quite a robust method because the second method that I'm going to show you requires a bit more intuition and it requires converting this integral into the form of f prime x over f of x and the result is going to be the log of the function. So basically the second method is to use a u substitution. Let's take a look at the method of partial fractions. So sec x we've already established can be written as 1 over the cos of x. And now this is still equivalent if I multiply the top and bottom of this fraction by cos of x. So effectively I'm multiplying by 1. So the top becomes cos of x and the bottom becomes cos squared of x. The bottom I can rewrite because of the identity cosine squared x plus sine squared x is equal to 1. I can rewrite the bottom or the denominator as 1 minus sine squared x and leave the numerator as it is. So now the integral becomes the integral of cos x over 1 minus sine squared x with respect to x. And to show a bit of clarity for the uh, preceding steps, I want to write this dx next to the cos x up here. Now to make this even simpler, let u equal sine x. Then if we take the derivative of this, we can say that du is equal to cos x by dx. So now I substitute du for cos x dx and u for sine x. The integral becomes the integral of du over 1 minus u squared. And again for a bit more clarity this time I shall write du to the right and I'll put a 1 as the numerator. So this integrand 1 over u sorry 1 over 1 minus u squared is what I'm going to separate out into partial fractions because 1 over 1 minus u squared I can rewrite that as 1 over 1 plus u by 1 minus u because on the bottom here we have a difference of two squares and this difference of two squares expands out to 1 plus u and 1 minus u. And now because I have two entities on the denominator I can separate these out into partial fractions. So I have 1 plus u as the denominator of one partial fraction and I have 1 minus u as the denominator of the second partial fraction and I happen to know that the numerators will be 1 half and 1 half. So you can satisfy yourself that if you combine these two partial fractions back into this fraction here that uh, this, will, this will work out to be 1 over 1 plus u times 1 minus u. So this integral is now equivalent to the integral of a half over 1 plus u plus a half over 1 minus u with respect to u. All right, so the integral is equal to, I'm going to bring the half out the front. So it becomes two single integrals of 
du on 1 plus u plus the integral of du on 1 minus u and this evaluates to a half outside of the log of 1 plus u and the second integral evaluates to minus the natural log of 1 minus u and of course we have the integration constant c so a few steps back we let u equals sine of x so if we substitute this back in we get the answer is a half of the log of 1 plus sine of x so a half is out the front minus log of 1 minus sine of x so the integral is equal to this now we're not finished yet because now we need to simplify this part here so we have the difference of two logs and if we know our log laws we can write this as the log of 1 plus sine x over 1 minus sine x because log a minus log b is equal to log of a over b so this is the rule that we are using we can manipulate this even further so if we times now by 1 plus sine x on the top and the bottom so note that we again have a difference of two squares so the denominator then we can write as 1 minus sine squared x the top we write as 1 plus sine x all squared and now the denominator 1 minus sine x squared we'll rewrite this as cos squared x and since we have a square on the top and a square on the bottom we can write the square outside of the fraction and get rid of the squares and now I can separate this into two fractions I can write this as the log of 1 over cos x plus sine x on cos x and this is all squared so can you see now that 1 over cos x we can write this more simply as sec x and sine over cos we can write this as tan x okay so we still have the half at the front so and we still have this uh, plus c that we need to add and now if we use another log law we can say this a half we can bring to the top we can make that into a power so we write this as log of sec x plus tan x all squared then times the half that we've brought up from the front and the uh, twos cancel the uh, integration constant we copy down so finally we say that if we cancel these out finally we can say that the integral of the secant of x is equal to the log of sec x plus tan x plus c so that's the method of partial fractions now as I said the second method is much less intuitive because it sort of requires us to know this result already so again if we say that sec x well we can write sec x as sec x multiplied by sec x plus tan x divided by 
sec x plus tan x. So again, I'm just multiplying by 1. And I expand this sec x into the numerator. So I get sec squared x plus sec x tan x over the denominator sec x plus tan x. So the integral now is the integral of sec x is equal to this integral here. So now note on the bottom if we call the denominator f of x we can say that's f of x is equal to sec x plus tan x so the function x is equal to sec x tan x well if we take the first derivative of fx which is f prime x sec x derives to sec x by tan x and the tan x differentiates to sec squared x. Okay, so you can see that this is equivalent to this, which is written the other way around. So the integral becomes the integral of f prime x on f of x. And integrals of this form always evaluate to the log of fx plus some integration constant. f of x we said was equal to sec x plus tan x and then plus the integration constant. So we say that the integral of sec x with respect to x is equal to the log, the natural log of sec x plus tan x plus c. So you can see the second method is a lot more efficient, but it does require you to know what the answer is going to be anyway. So it's uh, so if anything, it's a bit of a cash 22. Okay, so that's the integral of the secant of x. If you have found this video useful, please give me a like and please feel free to subscribe to my channel for more videos that may help you with your math homework or assignments. Thanks for watching. Best of luck with your studies, and I'll see you on the next video.